Good evening, everyone. Today, commuters were forced to detour, detour into Eagle River or asked to stay at home. And now, late this afternoon, ASD announced schools in Chugiak and Eagle River will be closed tomorrow because of the mayhem. But there is some hope from state officials who are scrambling to get the highway back open. We have multiple crews covering this story at this hour. Channel 2's Victoria Taylor and Beth Verge join us. And Beth was there last night as authorities cleaned up debris from the 18-wheeler that hit the South Eagle River overpass. And Beth, what can you tell us now? Yeah, Maria, sorry about that. I didn't hear you back there. But I just want to say right now we're on the North Eagle River exit. You can see some of these cars are moving a little bit in this area. But as you said, that congestion still very heavy throughout the times here, both back and forth in this area. Now, we did speak with the Anchorage police chief today. That is Justin Dahl. And he says that DOT is working on a couple of different things, including a new ramp actually at the South Eagle River exit. So for those of you who will be making that commute tomorrow, you can expect that there will be both on and off ramps in that area so that you can still continue to go toward that overpass but still avoid it and not go under it as there is still a high risk of debris falling from that bridge right there. Now we talked to APD yesterday as well. No injuries reported in that in that crash or anything like that but it is still something to keep in mind. You want to be very very careful whether you choose to go through town or tomorrow should this bridge or ramp actually be built properly and in time for that commute. You want to take it easy there are going to be a lot of people trying to funnel through still likely just going to be one lane available in that section. So keep in mind that it's really important to be very careful and very cautious if you're going to be out on those roads. Maria. So Beth, what is it that authorities want people to keep in mind now? There's a lot going on, as you said. What should they keep in mind? Yeah, so aside from those low speeds, you're going to have a few options when it comes to those detours. As of right now, you do have to go through Eagle River, and that's something that a lot of drivers were concerned about. You're taking a route where there are a lot of different turns. There are kids walking in that area. A lot of drivers are coming from all directions, trying to get out, in and out rather, and into Anchorage. Uh, but definitely want to keep in mind slow speeds. Keep those space in between you and the driver in front of you. I know that you guys had mentioned that someone had to be medevaced out because of an accident that was caused by some higher speeds earlier today. So extra caution, really what Chief Dahl was asking people to keep in mind. And also that ramp is a possibility. Maria? Really good tips. Thank you so much. Beth Birch reporting from the North Eagle River exit tonight. There is at least one person out there who's making her way along through the mess, actually above the mess. Joining us now is Channel 2's Tracy Sinclair. Tracy, what does that look like from your aerial view? Hey, Maria, actually traffic looks pretty good out here. And we think this is partially because a lot of people either didn't make it to town or just have decided to wait before the return trip. Traffic last night was so bad. For tonight, though, we do traffic moving quite well. And a lot of open space, people seem to be taking it slow. There's nothing like this morning as everybody was trying to come in town. So maybe it's because we're also a little bit more spread out on when we go home and when we go indoor. So again, right now, traffic looking pretty good on the Glen, at least if you're heading out. We are still seeing a lot of people trying to get into Anchorage through Eagle River. Maria? All right, thanks so much, Tracy. Picked the perfect mode of transportation. Well, as commuters spend hours at a crawl in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, many say the congestion is touch and go for some businesses as well. Channel 2's Victoria Taylor is live along Eagle River's business district. Victoria. Sure, Maria. So right now I am close to Business Boulevard. That is really where the heart of this detour was taking commuters. Uh, it's not so bad right now, but when we arrived earlier this afternoon, it was still very backed up, touch and go. So we wanted to know, was that good for businesses? And the short answer is some say yes and some say no. So here's what we actually found out. Uh, some businesses say it was much slower today than usual. They attribute that to drivers simply not wanting to get out of the vehicle and take any longer to get where they're going than they already had. Uh, on the other hand, some employees say they've seen several new faces that would otherwise typically bypass this part of the community. I've been in the car for the last four hours and I thought I'd stop and get some coffee. So coffee, then hopefully a restroom down the road a little bit. We'll get to that later. But 
Victoria, are any of the businesses concerned about the inventory of supply shipments coming in on time now that parts of that road are closed? So I did ask about that, and the Shell gas station, for example, they actually had a trip planned to go to Costco today. They told me it was to pick up non-essentials, and uh, the traffic was not worth tackling, so they decided to opt out. They did bring up how they're a little bit worried about knowing when their delivery truck's going to come in, but they are not at risk of running out of anything that, you know, would affect business. Uh, it's just really, I think, like a lot of us, we're just kind of waiting to see what happens next. All right. Thanks so much, Victoria Taylor reporting. Well, Bighorn Enterprises is the company that owns that rig. That's according to the Department of Transportation. DOT says it was permitted to carry a load that was 17 feet. The bridge is more than 18. So what happens next? For that story, we now turn to Channel 2's Rebecca Palsha. Rebecca. Well, Maria, what happens next is an investigation. It's DOT who's going to do that investigation. Of course, no one has been cited at this point. It's still very early in figuring out what has happened here. Now, we're going to take a look at this video. It's hard to see, but what DOT says you should look at is what, essentially what was hacked off by the bridge is an ATCO unit. I called Bighorn today, but none of my calls were answered and the voicemail was full. The company's Facebook page has also been deactivated. Now, according to the company's website, it's based in Fairbanks. DOT isn't saying much about Bighorn yet, but let's go back to that height issue. Again, the rig was permitted for 17 feet and the bridge is higher than that. I don't know um, what the height of the of the load was um, that they were permitted for 17 feet. Um, the bridge is over that. Uh, the vertical clearance is over that. So then they were doing something they weren't supposed to. We we'll have to investigate that and figure out what happened. So who's going to pay for all this? That story we have coming up tonight at 6. Maria. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Rebecca.